Welcome to Enrich's Papers. Today we're going to talk about how asking the right question can actually make you a better painter. But before we get into our topic, let's talk a little bit about hobby progress. All right, so I wanted to talk about some hobby progress in the class of this weekend, which I do every other week. Uh, I teach people how to paint miniatures or how I paint miniatures and possibly get some shortcuts and some benefits to how, you know, miniatures, uh, how easy it is to actually get into miniatures and not being intimidated at all. Also try to motivate people to better themselves uh, by looking at painting in a manner in which you want to purposefully paint and improve a mantra that Vince Frenchuela shares and I share with him wholeheartedly. Me being a teacher and knowing how people improve and really doing a study on the brain and how it learns things and functions helps me tremendously in this hobby and I hope to bring that to you. So I taught a class this weekend uh, and we did, well, we've been doing Far Striders. That's right. Um, we actually took the Far Striders from the Warhammer Underworlds Warband, and we took a Warband and we painted it from start to finish, more or less, uh, start to finish uh, within four to five hours uh, of the class. Um, but, you know, the, of course, there's a lot of little details that we actually did for homework within that class. But in the section of every other week, in three classes, we actually finished the Far Striders. So I'm going to show you the Far Striders now. All right, so there we go. We have that right there. I hope you can see it. Um, and then we did this one over here. I'll let you do that. Check that out. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, and then finally, uh, this is the last one that we did uh, there. It looks pretty, I think it came out pretty nicely. Go Stormcast Eternals to add to my Stormcast Eternal Army, which is awesome because I really, really like the Stormcast Eternals. They're kind of like, it's definitely a break. I'm not painting them for competition or anything like that, but I'm painting them to my tabletop standard quality, which is where my skill level is at, where I'm comfortable painting uh, a miniature for two to three days, and that would be for me a speed paint. But that's, you know, my level of insanity. Also, uh, I painted a Wolf Lord Crumb. That's right, Wolf Lord Crumb. That is done right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Pretty cool. Now, all of these miniatures uh, that I am going to showcase uh, will actually be on the Miniatures Paintbrush uh, Legion. They're all posted up there. But uh, I will put it on the YouTube channel. Once I get the computer up, running, and everything else, I'll do a lot of showcase videos. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing those showcase videos is, one, I want to show you what I've been doing while I haven't been video editing and, and, and you know, doing that kind of stuff, um, and I haven't been able to do tutorials, but I wanted to show you what I've been doing hobby side, plus I want to get a better understanding how to use the programs, which I'm, I'm evolving into new programs um, with a computer, so I want to tinker around and try new things, and I thought that showcasing some of the work would be a good opportunity in order to do that. Of course, what I'm going to do is you know, have a live show and I'm gonna have like maybe a showcase for the week or something like that. So that's what I'm hoping to do if all goes well. Um, more hobby progress. I just started this one today. Um, murder fan, because I couldn't just leave it alone. This is actually represents the last miniature that I painted last year. The total last miniature, last anything that I have to do with miniatures that I painted up last year when my airbrush broke. And well, you know, it's the summertime and I couldn't just leave it be. So I started murder fang to go into my army. Again, a lot of fun painting this up. Um, and, you know, not done with it. That's a w work in progress, WIP. For those that didn't know, WIP, if you've ever seen that, we're not actually whipping models. No, no, that, that's not a thing. I mean, it can be a thing, but huh? Um, <laughs> uh, actually, work in progress is what that means. See, I didn't know that for a while, and I was like, what in the world is whip? I know, I know, I know. All righty, so let's get into the computer hobby progress. Now, 
I told you a while ago that I'm going to order the component for the computer and I have been waiting for quite some time and Amazon's apologizing to me for not getting me the piece on time. It's still not here today. I'm going to have to contact them and let them know that yet again, nothing was delivered and I don't know what's going on, but it's a highly demanded card. Um, it is the super version of the video card that's out and you know, I got it for a uh, for the same price as I've gotten it for if I would bought the regular version of the card because I, I jumped on it the second it released. And now it's going for a premium, 100 up to $200 more than the original uh, price value of it. So it is definitely a hot commodity and I placed my order with them and I'm just waiting for it to come. You know, that, that's all I can do with the Computer Hobby Progress. But in the meantime, I actually have something that I picked up to show you guys for some more hobby progress. But again, I left it over there. I don't know why I keep doing this. Like I set up my desk and everything with everything that I'm supposedly going to need uh, in order to do the show. And for some reason, for some reason, I always seem to forget the tech stuff. So I'm gonna go right there and come right back, but I'm gonna keep talking to you while I do it. So here I am going over here, and it's gonna be really quick. I mean, really quick, here it is, see? Uh, didn't take long at all, did it? All right, so what I picked up is this Stream Deck. Oh, stream Deck. And it's not the, the one with the most buttons, it's not the one with the least buttons, it's somewhere in the middle, which seems about right for me. And what this can do is I can possibly do like question of the week and press a button and the actual animation comes out, like <laughs> just to press the button and I can do them. So if I wanted to switch and look at GW community site while I'm doing something like a live show like this, cause this, this is what I want to do for a live show, right? You know, this, this would be cool, right? Um, I can literally just press a button and boop, there you go, Games Workshops will be up on the computer and it'll already switch. Like I can program these buttons to do just about anything I want. So I can have a lot of stuff going on with this stream deck right here. Uh, Elgato makes it. I'm saying Elgato makes it, it's actually Corsair is the owner of the company and I have a lot of Corsair components for my computer. Uh, yeah, including its power supply and um, it's actual RAM, it's uh, RGB lit RAM. They're the first one to put uh, RGB lighting into computers and they, tro they totally like led the way with it. They, they are the, the professionals for you know making your computer really look like a discotheque. Lights, lights, lights. Other good news is that I'm working with this company called Anything Printed here in Hagerstown, and they're actually developing like certain kind of clings and stickers that, well, yeah, clings, uh, that are gonna go onto the computer. One of the things that they're gonna do, and it's gonna be my first show, like when I come back, it's gonna be, all right, let me show you how I decked out my cust the custom made computer over here for the miniatures paintbrush and and how I built it might be the second show uh, I don't know something between maybe showcase and then build a computer and like really just learning how to use these the software editing program at the same time showing you exciting things that are happening for the channel so there it is for the computer hobby progress it always seems to be something isn't there yeah, I'm trying to prepare that. All right, just make sure that there's everything that I possibly could need to be successful. And um, yeah, that. <laughs> All right, so time for a question of the week. All right, question of the week. Uh, questions, well, there's several questions actually, and I really do appreciate that, but I wanna showcase all of them because you know, I can do that. <laughs> all right, so um, let's start off with the longest question. Wolf Brother Mythos, you asked the doozies. And one, you asked me what was the favorite music to genre, and they're just like, I, I love music, so I gave you a whole list of things. Now, Wolf Brother Mythos from the channel Frost and Fist, and if you're not subscribed, go over to their channel and check them out. Um, asks, which shades of blue is your and, your and favorite paint range for each shade of blue. What is my favorite shades of blue and each paint, uh, paint range? And people, he indicated that people that watch the channel for a long time know that I really do love the color blue. Um, I just enjoy the color blue, uh, but I try to break out of my, my comfort range. I do other colors too. Timmy the Tao, which I can show you, is actually white with uh, red. So, interesting stuff. All right, so. <laughs> 
They asked me favorite color blues, paint ranges. All right, all right. So these are the ones that I use frequently. These are the ones that I use for my space wolves, all right? Uh, let's start off with Vallejo model color. Okay, Vallejo model color, I use a uh, sky blue. I do like that, right? I use a deep sky blue, which is a really good one um, also. Uh, I use uh, dark Prussian blue. Really like dark Prussian blue. Um, I also like regular dark blue for Vallejo model color. Now, the sky blue is the only one I use for my space walls, but I have alternatives here, right? All right, so whew, that's one, right? And hopefully... That, that's good. Okay, so let's get into um, Vallejo Extra Opaque Colors, all right? That's Game Extra Opaque Colors. Let's see if I have them all here. Uh, for, for that, for blue, I do like Heavy Blue. And these colors, if you didn't know, actually have excellent coverage. So the heavy, the extra opaque one uh, has more pigment to it. So if you're looking for something that, that has like superior, I just dropped that, uh, superior co coverage, the extra opaque line I find is amazing. And yes, I actually put very little bit of it in an airbrush and, and paint that. I put everything through the airbrush. Like I don't know, everything goes in the airbrush. And just depends how you thin it, right? Um, if it's the right color, then that's all that matters to me. Alrighty, so uh, let's get into Vallejo regular game color and the ones that I really do enjoy. All right, so um, Imperial Blue. So much that I've shaken this, I actually had to rewrite and relabel Imperial Blue on it or, you know, because I've used it so much. All right. <laughs> Um, here's another one, uh, Night Blue. This one is really good for Night Lords. Yeah, again, that thunderous sky, really cool stuff there. Not that I painted Night Lords, but I would get into it. I don't like, ooh, I don't care. Um, I do like vampires, so. All right, so, uh, turquoise. Yep, mm hmm for little game color, turquoise, which is an amazing color. Uh, I really like it, Troll Bloods. That's how I started all my Troll Bloods. Um, is there any other blue? Nope, that's it for Vallejo game color. Sticking with Vallejo while I'm here, let's get into their inks. Love inks. Uh, if you thin it the right way with the medium, you, you don't get speckle. Like, it's such a smooth transition when you do things. So, game ink, also green washes. Uh, it's just straight blue. True blue game ink, I like to use that. And that one I use for my space wolves for um, actually the energy claws. So if you see icy claws, I'm using that blue. Now all these transitions here, the uh, the light blue, the uh, up to the white. I, I painted it with white first and then I just did the ink. I just did more layers of the ink on the top and less layers on the bottom. You would see that I get like a little transition going on there. Uh, and that transition is like blue and icy blue. It just works, it works so well. Uh, if you do not have the game ink line, it is, one of the easiest ones I find to work with uh, when it comes to inks, uh, it's 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 great to wear. I mean, I love them. I love them. Uh, try them out. I definitely recommend them. Alrighty, so uh, speaking of inks, let's get into uh, scale color. Intense blue. Intense blue is a dark blue, but you know, deceptively so. If you're doing in layers, you can actually get a nice transition with this. This is great stuff. Their intensity line, intensity line is amazing. If you haven't picked it up, pick it up. That uh, the intense wood, bang, bada, bang, bang. Uh, the intense wood uh, is actually, and it says intense, intense wood. It, it's, it's basically uh, magic in a bottle. Uh, you, like you have a stump there and you spray with it and it looks like wood. Ta-da! I mean, you could always, you know, bring up the highlights and stuff like that. But I glaze a sheen of that stuff on there and then I just bring it down with some uh, AK Interactive Matte Wash. And man, oh man, it does an amazing, amazing job. You can also brush them on. Uh, you're going to need more matte varnish because they come out really glossy, the inks. Okay. 
So there it is for scale color inks. Ha. Huh. All right. So for washes, Draken, uh, Draken off Nightshade. Yeah, that is a uh, favorite wash. And I don't use washes as traditional. I mean, I have used washes out of the pot and then spread them out. But I also put them through an airbrush and their transitions are pretty nice, especially for bases and stuff like that to give it a cold, hopeful look in the shadows. Good stuff. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's get on to P3 formula. All right, troll base. That's right, Troll Base is a great color. You can see right there, it's really, really cool stuff. Uh, Exile Blue, really deep blue. Love that dimension, great for shadows or dark, dark transition. And Underbelly Blue, literally for what I use for underbellies, uh, for trolls and stuff like that. All right, so P3 formula, good stuff. Okay, so um, Scale Color Fantasy and Game Line. Uh, Jordalyn Turquoise, I hope I'm getting that right. Uh, Ad Math Blue, good stuff. Look, look at that, look at this. It's so tasty. Look at that transition from one to the other, very close. All right, um, and then um, Dark Arani Hod Blue. All right, look how blue that is. That is like deep sea, unnatural kind of blue, love it. Uh, and then Hirel Blue. It's uh, their version of uh, like a, between a turquoise and a light blue. It's it's pretty good. And I like uh, Fantasy and Game because they have colors you don't normally can get anywhere else. Like their colors are very specific to their line. And it, it's sort of like, it's sort of like going to Banana Republic. Like their colors, you, it's hard to match their colors with just about anything else. And if anybody shops at Banana Republic, you know. All right. <laughs> their colors, their reds and stuff like that. Like their burgundies. Like what are you going to match that with? You can't, you just gotta match it with their stuff. All right, so next up, let's get into Citadel. So I really love Sotek Green, which is a blue green. It's more blue in my opinion. Uh, and then uh, Temple Car Blue, good stuff with that. So those are my two faves from Citadel line. And I use them for my Stormcast, so there you go. All right, we're getting through. Mythos, you asked the biggest questions. Like, it's so much content. All right, so let's go into um, FW Inks. All right, uh, Cyan, Process Cyan. Really like Process Cyan, and I like it because I can just like mix it in with the white to make a, a lighter blue, you know, and that kind of thing going on. So it makes it happen. I could desaturate it by adding um, some, uh, what is this, uh, cold gray. Got some cold gray going on. I can desaturate it if I want to. Uh, if I want to make a black blue, I could always just throw some black in there. But yeah, FW inks are great. And there's just so much in here. Like, I, I don't know how much. Like, this is going to last me for just about my entire. I'll paint everything up here and still have some left over. Let's just put it that way. All right. So from the FW ink line, that is my favorite blue. All right. So next up. We have our uh, Minotaur line, and that's from the Badger Company. All right, so Werewolf Gray. Uh, Werewolf Gray is the color that I use for my Space Wolf. So that is the base for my Space Wolf right there. I love having some Werewolf Gray. It's like most used color of the range. Um, and then I like transitional colors, like Spellsinger or Blue is pretty neat. Uh, and then we have Troll Hide because it's that, that turquoise-ish color really cool stuff um i like laguna blue uh deep rich blue actually you can see it on the top better uh you see these things are frosted so it's kind of weird to tell from the bottom of these things uh and a nice sky blue i always like a sky blue all right some of these paints are funky so watch out it was my first uh set as far as price is concerned per paint and price is a big issue for you uh you can get your army can painter variety but Honestly, for airbrush paints, I'll, I'm I'm loving the Minotaur uh, for that for the price paint for what you get. Alrighty, so I'm gonna uh, break this up a little bit and go into war colors. Now, war colors 
are an interesting brand. It's like Scale 75. They have that ultra matte to it, but they have a system going on, okay? So if you ever wanted to know what should I use for the shadows and what should I use for uh, a base coat and what should I use for uh, a highlight a color and um, what should I use for a secondary highlight color and what should I use for an extreme highlight color, um, well, War Colors has you covered. Uh, and it's very simply done. They have, let's see, the darkest color would be blue five, their blue five, right? Uh, and then their blue four, and then their blue three. Look at that blue, that's a great blue. Um, their blue two, and their blue one, ultra highlight, right? So there's that right there. And War Colors does an amazing job, but that's not all. I like blue green stuff. All right, blue green stuff, that's uh, turquoise five and four and three and two and one. Good stuff right there. Okay, so the turquoise line for that is amazing. And finally, their purplish blue line, uh, marine five, four, look at that. That like radiates. Um, three, two, one, blast off. All right, there you go. Uh, from War Colors, I like those blues a lot, a lot. Um, okay, Wicked Colors. Now, a lot of people don't know Createx company for Wicked Colors. You use it for model cars and stuff like that, which is really, really great. So now, Createx, uh, their Wicked Laguna Blue is pretty cool. Look how much you get of that. Look at that. Look at, look at that. That's like vehicle and terrain heaven, which I use these things for. Um, actually, I'm trying to get through the Minotaur stuff first before I even get into this. Uh, and then Wicked Blue. Look how blue that is right there. All right. Huh. You thought I was done, right? Well, I'm not. Um, this is uh, this is an interesting company. It's from Auto Air Colors, uh, also a Wicked Colors base company. And this is a candy blue. Look at that. Look at that candy blue. You never painted a candy paint job. You have to paint it uh, another color first, like silver or something like that. So you have that pearlescent view to it. And then you put this on top of it and it just like glazes the entire thing and wow. So it works like an ink uh, if you're just like, you know, do all the undershading and you do a nice little glaze and spray a glaze on it uh, of your color. It's gonna have all that undershading pop out. Very similar. Uh, but you're doing things in layers, uh, pretty cool with that one my favorite blue when it comes to auto colors lines specifically made for RC cars or you know model cars uh, and then finally Tamiya Tamiya Batonek Incorporated bam, 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 bam. Uh, Laverne and Shelley you know uh, I grew up to that anyway a uh, nice little flat blue from Tamiya Tamiya Tomato 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 all right look how the whole screen turns blue when I do that look at that that's pretty that's interesting, great camera. All right, so, all right, that answers that, hopefully that answers your question, Wolf Brother Mythos, about what kind of blues do I use? Do I settle in on one blue for one? No, no. In fact, I give myself an excuse to use every single one of these. Um, so if I have a project, I'm like, hey, I want to do this. Or I have a, a Reaper miniature I want to paint. I was like, I'm going to try this color. I'm going to try this paint. I'm going to see how this reacts. I'm going to do that. So there's a lot of instances where I use uh, a lot of different of these, uh, these colors. And I, I look for me to, to use the colors. And although I really love blue, I paint other things as well. You know, I try to do so effectively. All right. So. Um, I want to get in on the next question, Emily Yacheso? And Yacheso? All right, Emily. Emily is so, M is awesome. I am is just an awesome person. Um, she actually says, wait, are you building Cerebro? Um, it's an overkill computer. It's like more power than I could possibly ever need to be able to do uh, this stuff, but what, what I gain from doing that is future proofing a little bit. So while other technologies come out and programs really push the boundaries of what a computer can do, I can still handle that stuff with 
without an issue. You know, um, if I wanted to have 30 programs going on at the same time, my computer won't slow down. You know, let's let's just put it that way, okay? Um, I, I could do some, I could start doing some 3D rendering, which is one of the most difficult tasks for a computer to do. You know, like that Pixar animation and stuff like that. Yeah, I could, I could get into that if I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so there's that. If I wanted to do a live broadcast and do a VR game and run, I don't know, so 20,000 programs in the back. Well, I mean, not 20,000, but at least 30 to 50 programs in the back while listening to music, having a movie, movie playing, and just about, you know, doing a handstand. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It'll handle it, no problem. And that's what I want. I want a worry-free environment where I can create and not worry about it and have enough room and space in there so I can put loads of video on there and video content create and edit as much as I want and have massive files where I can actually do that. Oh my God, Vince Ventriola just sent me a message. Oh, my bad. I'll read it in a sec, Vince. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, anywho, <laughs> Yeah, so sort of, sort of building Cerebro. All right. Puzzle Bending asks, what besides Space Marines would you say would be, an, would be excellent minis for a beginner? Now, that, be, that depends. Like, are, you, are you talking about Warhammer 40K? Are you talking about, um, are you talking about just Sigmar? Uh, like, are you talking about, you know, um, other games? You know, there are other games out there, not just Age of Sigmar. And GW is a big portion of the wargaming hobby, but it's not the only. Like Malifo, stay away from Malifo. Yeah, if you're beginning, I would stay away from Malifo. Unless you really want to challenge yourself. Um, there you go. You know what, for Age of Sigmar, I think, you know, the Death Faction, the Night Haunts, seem pretty easy to get into so you can learn your transition. So Ghosts. Ghost will definitely uh, help you out when it comes to you know learning your transition. It's a very easy army. Uh, it can be potentially easy to paint because you don't have to really worry about you know eyes and you don't have to worry about a whole bunch of things. But then again, you know I'm conflicted with that. What that allows you to do is allows you to become successful without learning the proper techniques to that you will have to master eventually as you move on into the hobby. So if you're new to the hobby and you just want to paint something and it come out pretty cool, yeah, then I would definitely go into like that whole uh, night haunt type of situation where you're painting those figures. However, if you want to purposefully learn how to do eyes or purposefully learn how to do things like that, um, I would up and next step it into Stormcast Eternals, not for eyes, but you'll get a lot more details in those in which you have to, you know, paint belts and stuff like that and learn that. So going from the Nighthawk, going into your, your basic Stormcast Eternals, right? And then uh, get into, um, something that's more detailed you know any anything that has a lot more detail you know uh, I definitely wouldn't start for 40k 40k I think space marines are where it's at because everything is kind of just like one coat especially if everybody has helmets then you don't have to worry about it so much I mean you get better at painting helmets but other than that um hmm I, I would say orcs no maybe Nurgle if you want to be successful, yeah, okay. So Death Guard Company would be if 40K, I would think so, because um, there's a lot of different variation in there, and you could totally contrast paint that stuff, you know, and not have to, not, if it's blotchy, and, and it doesn't matter, you know, because you could just paint it as dirt and grime, or, you know, put a layer on that. And again, starting out in mini, uh, you can get into Death Guard. In fact, I, I would recommend it if you don't, you know, but if you wanted to do it right, you gotta have to put the research in. And if you go to do the research in painting Death Guard, then what we're talking about is looking at pimples, looking at pus, looking at, you know, open sores, and like doing the research alone, looking at all those images and then trying to recreate it. Now, if you don't wanna puke after that, then you're good uh, if you have a strong stomach. If you ever looked at the pimple and said, ew, then maybe not. But if you look at the pimple and say, mmm, delicious. All right. 
<laughs> you see what I'm saying though. If you want to do it right, you're going to have to do a lot of research and if that's just too gross for you. Um, higher levels, um, Harlequins. I think Harlequins would be the toughest uh, because there's a lot of freehand with those diamond patterns, doing black leather that actually makes it look like it's shining. There's a lot of high level stuff that you can do that uh, to make Harlequins look, you know, award winning. But if you're just throwing it on the table, you can just take shortcuts. I mean, a lot of people take a lot of shortcuts when it comes to building a lot of these uh, models and painting it because most of, the, most of the people that I've encountered kind of paint the models so they can play with them. So that means they have to have some like a range of time, some limit of time in which they want to finish their models. Now, usually with me, I kind of leave that open-ended because if I don't get to play, I'm, I'm not phased by it. So if I don't get to play in the next three years, I don't get to play the game in the next three years. You know, I'm painting my models and I'm happy with it. But if I do get a game in at some point um, and I'm bringing my models out, I'm more impressed by the aesthetic beauty of it than to actually know uh, how everything kind of operates. Although I do kind of, I've gotten a little better at learning how things operate and I'm asking a lot of players uh, how to up my game um, in order to do that. And these, these guys uh, and girls are pretty amazing on the battlefield. So they've given me a lot of different recommendations and food for thought. But the, my problem with that is, is that I never want to feel like I have to paint something. Like I never want to feel like, oh man, I have to paint this uh, Redemptor Dreadnought because I need another firepower and this, blah, 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 blah. but what if I'm not in the mood to paint that? But I have a game coming up this week and I really want to do well. So my motivation in there is to get that sucker done so this way I can play it over the weekend and win a game. Not, I am going to paint this and learn from it and become a better painter by it and take my time and no that's thrown out the window. So, you know, I think it devalues the paint job to a certain extent and you cut some corners in order to, for the sake of getting it done and getting it on the gaming table. So, you know, is, is that something that I'm willing to, to do? Not me personally, not other people do and I'm not trying to judge anybody else and that's their thing, uh, but me, it's all about me impressing myself. And if I'm not impressed with my own work, then I, I don't know why I, I would be in the hobby, you know? <laughs> now, that being said, everything that I paint, I call tabletop quality. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Right now, the only thing that's not tabletop quality, in my opinion, is my Night Titan. Because I'm purposefully built and painted that with my goal in mind. So I had an end goal in mind, get a gold medal at the Nova Open competition and weep. I <laughs> weep that I got, I got acknowledged by expert painters, um, really heroes in this hobby, a absolute astounding painters and, you know, getting recognized by them and getting uh, that, um, I guess, recognition from uh, those top artists would be amazing because you kind of like, you know, it's like one of those situations. There's some uh, situations where, you know, you, you got your hero and then you meet your hero and it's like, man. But most of the times that I met uh, a lot of these people, they're awesome people. So I'm like, wow, not only like the, the expectation is met or superseded by the actual presence of the person is awe inspiring. Okay, so. <laughs> So that's my idea uh, when, when it comes to starting minis, which minis would be great to start. Yeah, go for that Death Guard if you don't mind the puke and stuff like that. Orcs are fun um, because if you like, you know, kit bashing, if you like just throwing other pieces of uh, miniatures onto your model and just like make your own custom models, if, if that is your thing, orcs are the the epitome of customization. You can literally take, literally take a, a model kit, a car, or a, a military vehicle, better military vehicle. You could take a military vehicle and actually convert it, or sometimes a car, uh, convert it. My, my friend actually took a Willys and converted that into an orc vehicle. Um, 
you can convert that or use pieces of that into your org vehicle because it doesn't matter. If you have extra bits from another army or if your friend says, hey, you know, I got this lot of extra bits. Uh, what am I going to do with it? And it's like, well, I'll take it. Why? Because you can always decorate your stuff with other factions bits because orcs kind of like look at the battlefield and see all the things strewn around and kind of like say, hey, that would work on this. Even though it wouldn't work physically anywhere else, if they believe it is going to work, it works. That's that's orc logic, you know. If I say, hey, man, if I put this uh, Funko Pop inside my engine, it's like the heartbeat of the engine, and it'll come to life, even though there's no gas, uh, there's no oil, uh, there's no batteries, there's there's no wires, like, <laughs> but they believe it. Put that in there, boom, it starts, starts right up. That's orcs, right? I love that. Love that. So that's also, if, if customizing is your job, is your thing, um, definitely look into the orc faction for that. Know that they're a horde army, so you'll have plenty of practice to get better at painting because they're known as the green tide for a reason because there's just so many models that you're going to have to kind of get in order for them to be effective. Yeah, they die by the, the hundreds. <laughs> Corn. If you want to play, I don't. I don't like corn aesthetic though. All right. So next up, uh, those are the questions of the week. I want to get into the news. All right, it's time for some news. Okay, there are new war bands coming out, uh, being available for Warcry. The Unmade, which is totally creepy. I don't like it. Ew, gives me nightmares. Um, <laughs> the Corvus Cabal, which is. Crow people. I like the crow people. Actually, I think they're actually kind of cool. I like the concept of them. I love the movie The Crow. Um, Brandon Lee, sorry. Um, Bruce Lee fan, too. Anywho, uh, pretty cool. The Splintered Fang. Snake gladiators. Because snake gladiators. All right. <laughs> um, the Shattered Storm Vault uh, includes the Dominion of Sigmar scenery, which I still want to pick up. They have it in my, uh, they have it tempting me in my game store, but I've been really focusing all my hobby budget on the computer. So, and, and doing advancements to that. So I haven't really, technically, I mean, yeah, I've gotten some things, but I couldn't pass up. But, um, but yeah, no, terrain at this point, I still want it, but you know, all right. Um, let's stop talking about that. I'm sweating. Am I sweating? All right. Anyway, go plastic. Um, all right, Necromunda came out with some things which are interesting. The Enforcers look like Dr Judge Dredd. I, I like them a lot. Actually, I think that's one of my favorite um, bands uh, for Necromunda right now. Uh, they have new cards and dice and the Book of Judgment, which is pretty cool. They have different cards. They have Intrigue and Racket cards or Scheming your way up to victories. That's interesting. Uh, dramatic uh, Persona cards, so it allows you to take, like... Um, Bounty hunter type models, I guess. Uh, lone wolf types, I guess. Um, and then we have um, the underdog cards, which is, uh, well, levels of playing field with uh, underhanded kind of tricks that you can do, which seems really, really interesting. Alrighty, so that's that's all I want to talk about for the news, because I really can't show you stuff that I wanted to talk about. So, let's get on to our main topic. Now, asking the right questions can actually help you become a better painter, artist, teacher. All right, so let's take a look at our hobby, right? So here's the, the, the word of the, the actual words of wisdom that I want to impart to you today. The quality of your questions determines the quality of your answers. All right, ask the better question your mind's gonna start thinking about the better, better answer. Uh, and the type of questions determine the type of ideas your brain will receive and conceive, okay? Just getting into that and focusing on that. So if you ask the right question, your brain will start thinking in a direction um, that'll be explicit to that. Let me ask some questions and give you some reference to this. Okay, first question for our hobby. How can I paint this mini so it's awesome? Now that is not uh, the type of intriguing question that you may wanna ask because it's too broad. It's something that is like, oh, well, what do you perceive as awesome? All right, let's start there. Let's define the awesome, let's find the elements that make it awesome, create a list of those things that are awesome, and, that, and, and you will be stuck in that process for a very, very, very long time. Um, 
A better focus question would be, right, what technique am I going to attempt to get better at with this miniature? That's a question I frequently ask. Um, when I did Wolf Floor Crumb, my only focus, only focus was to learn how to black line better. Because my black lining technique isn't, it wasn't as strong as I wanted it to be. So in the next several miniatures, uh, especially for every space marine that I do, uh, I'm including a lot more black lining into it, and you really can't see it too, too well in this, but uh, every chain has a black line around it, every armor panel, every uh, recess, everything that has, I black lined everything and took hours upon hours upon hours in order to ensure that I did it right, you know? Um, but I learned how to do it, and the more I do it, the quicker I'm gonna get at it, and what that adds to the miniature is separation from armor panels and contrast when it comes to the shadows. And you can't go wrong by adding more contrast to your miniatures. Period. Period. All right. Contrast is what makes things pop on the table. It actually elevates. You can see it more. And if you can see it more, it'll be noticed more. If you're painting for competition, you want people to notice your miniature above everybody else. And the answer to that, well, one is, you know, a whole bunch of details and then but the, what draws them in is that contrast that's that's what makes you hold hook that's the hook to get you in and that's the hook that's going to keep you staying looking at wow but that contrast is amazing all right so that's a better question another example of the question is what can i do to improve the contrast all right, so this thing called a color wheel, um, if you use it, a little bit of color theory here, um, if you want your blues to really, really pop, you want, you want to add, not a bright, a subdued orange to the back of your shadows. Using the opposite end actually creates a spectrum of the color uh, from the complete opposite to the color that you want. That'll make it pop, all right? So let's say if you're green, right? You're gonna to wanna to add like something red in the shadows. Uh, if you're purple, you may wanna add something yellow in the shadows just to make it a little light glaze. It doesn't have to be over pronounced. It could be very, very light, but it is so powerful when you bring it up to the next level. So using your color wheel um, to add contrast helps, uh, but yeah, there's a good thing. Uh, what color can I use or incorporate in this miniature to have contrast, to bring it up, to make it pop? Again, color wheels and color theory, definitely in the know. All right, um, how can I tell a story with this piece? I learned something about competitive miniature painting. Well, actually with the night, I learned how to overcome my fear of, of doing freehand, which, Vince Ventrola, thank you, thank you, thank you for pushing me. I needed it, I really did, I needed it. Um, but one of the things that I really wanted to focus on, especially with that base, is how can I tell a story? And there is a story to that base if you look really, really closely. Hopefully the story, and this is what really, really translates well. If the story can be communicable, communicable, right, without you explaining it. <laughs> So I'm not going to tell you what the story is for, uh, there's several stories being played on uh, on my competition piece, the, the wolf, but you know, um, I want you to look at it, really look at it and figure out the story I'm trying to tell, just possibly with just the title and the miniature. And if I'm really good, not even the title, you don't even have to look at the title to know what I'm trying to say. All right. So. Specific, you have to be specific with this question. So how do you develop a question? Rule number one, you need to be very specific. If you're going to be general about the question you're gonna ask, your mind is gonna expand and look at the general uh, ideas and never really focus in on the thing that you're trying to get better at. Um, let me give you an example, all right? How many shades of gray are there in this background? You haven't seen them yet? Your eyes register it, your brain can see it, 
like this is a lighter gray because it's refracting there's a darker gray there's like a heather gray going on in there going into like a steelish gray over there uh the gray on the racks as the lights hitting it over there you got some gray going on in some of the boxes over here this is white uh, over here, Archeon fading into a gray. And like there's so many, like hundreds of gray colors in the background here, but your mind just says, oh, that's just a gray background with some elements and a lot of details and whatever. It's like just background stuff. I'm not really paying attention to it. If you clutter your mind with so many of the details, then you're never really gonna focus in and get better at the thing that you really wanna focus in and get better at. So asking the right question, involves being very specific at what you want to get better at okay um it's very specific on the goal that you're trying to achieve and something we use in, a, in teaching worlds called backwards mapping and then you look at the goal this is what i want to achieve and then you say okay so what steps do i need to take to achieve that goal all right I, it's what i did for the the nova open i'm still doing for the nova open uh, all right i wanted to get a goal at the nova open uh, and be recognized as an artist um, what steps do I need to take? And part of that for me is to subject myself to uh, opinions of others and feedback from others. Not, not every piece of feedback uh, that you get from every random person is exactly um, what you need to follow, right? But it gives you an objective. Like somebody's looking at a piece and they're noticing that. So do I notice that? It's one thing about painting, uh, if you get a little too close to it, you, you ignore things. You kind of just want to get it done. Want to get it done and move on to the next thing, and you're missing things. You're missing things. Uh, other people who haven't seen your miniature will notice things that you've missed. So it's really important to get that feedback from people. And what some of the best feedback comes from people that don't even, they're not even interested in the hobby. Like that is great. Like I get people like, oh my gosh, you're so weird. You have all this in your basement. And then they say, wow, that's a pretty cool miniature. Well, what do you like about it? Well, I really like A, B, C, D. These are the things that I nailed, all right? I was like, yeah, what, well, what do you think this, the story's about? Well, what, what kind of story am I telling? The story, yeah, take a look at it. They take a look at it and be like, well, I don't know. I don't see a story. Boom, feedback. Now I know I need to work on the story of the miniature and I want to be able to communicate certain things with my paintings so this way your person who's not a miniature painter that has nothing to do with this hobby can look at it and gain the same kind of feels the same kind of impressions as someone who has been in the hobby forever so feedback from just about everybody is important so important so now i wasn't going to enter the night titan into anything anything whatsoever but i decided to enter it into the ever chosen which I took locally. Um, I didn't care if I won. This is not really a painting competition to me. It's a local store bidding. Like if you have friends, right? And they came in and, and just bid for the sake of bidding, then you're really not getting like, they're bidding because it's an awesome piece, undeniably, right? You're not getting that. Um, if you're getting the honest opinion from total strangers, then you are getting that, uh, you're definitely getting that promotion and winning that, that prize. But here's the thing, in my community, in my local gaming store, I have several Golden Demon winners already um, that frequent the store. And they, you know, coming by and stuff like that, really talented artists are coming by. Um, I don't know who all judged it, but it was available for everybody. But the thing was is that I got invaluable feedback from people that were really important. It's like, hey, I really noticed, that, I mean, it's an otherwise, just a little bit of CNC here, otherwise an outstanding model. There was this thing that was really bothering me. And if I notice it, I'm afraid that the judges at the Nova Open might, all right? Uh, one of those things being is that it's just the base itself looks like just rocks with some airbrushing. That's because the piece isn't done. Like I still have to add snow into it. And it's, uh, there's, there's other things at play here that I have not added to the miniature. It was actually incomplete. And I submitted it anyway for that feedback. And it was actually pretty cool to get that feedback from people. I don't think pictures do it justice. Like if I put the pictures up, um, I don't think it does justice. I think you need to see it in person because when it's being judged, um, 
it's going to be judged in person. It's not going to be judged just via pictures. So in the competition at the Nova Open. So I really want people to see it firsthand in order to get that raw feedback. Um, so that's just going to improve. That's just going to improve my level and hopefully get come in the master class. Maybe, 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 maybe get a gold. That would be absolutely outstanding. Alrighty. So, um, are you asking yourself the right questions? Speaking of questions, leave questions below to be featured at the questions of the week, right? <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, ask yourself the right questions. When you wanna up your game, you wanna level up, what is it that you can level up? What are you gonna work on to level up? How can you specifically target a thing so you can get better at that thing? Um, yeah, and that goes for anything, that goes for life. I mean, really, uh, whenever you have a goal, how can I work at that so I can get better at it? And then break it down to elements and then do each element and work on each individual element and ask yourself the question, can I do this? Well, how about this? Can I do this? What can I do to actually accomplish this goal? What steps do I need to take to get to my goal? And it's really, really important to have yourself a goal when it comes to this hobby. Now, if your goal is paint up 2,000 points in one week, then you need to work on your speed painting. If your goal is to win a gold medal at a local competition, do your research, find out what people like in the area, and paint that. <laughs> if your goal is to just push yourself then what technique are you gonna be working on? There's just so many specific questions. You need to ask the right question in order to get the right answer and lead you into the right directions with that. So this is just like one of my words of wisdom. I'm gonna bring my teaching stuff into this. <laughs> um, hey, it works, you know? I know, because I've been doing it for years. Uh, well, I'm only bringing you the stuff that works. Anyway, I'm digressing. Oh boy, this is getting nervous. All right. <laughs> I think that's all I wanted to share with you today. I don't think if there's anything else. Well, if I miss it, I'll be in next week. All right, so, hope you like the words of wisdom kind of thing. I don't know, I kind of like it. It's pretty cool. Maybe by next week, I'll have all the material and everything built, and maybe I'll be coming to you live. <gasps> live. That would be amazing, right? Anywho, you know what? If you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paint.